18th chapter. Father, we thank you. Hey, we give your name the glory and the honor and the praise for all that you're about to do in the midst of your people. For you alone, oh God, I thank you for this word. Let it be life-changing in the hearers of your word. In the name of Jesus, you promised that you would not allow your word to return unto you void, but it would accomplish that thing where until you have sent it. And I know that you have a purpose for this word for somebody. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Clap those hands one more time. First Kings chapter 18. And uh, I want to begin at verse 41. It's our custom to stand on the reading of the word of God. His word is good. Yes. Amen. I said his word is yes. good. Yes. Somebody say amen. I'm excited. I'm too excited. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I slept for about two hours. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to preach now. I might fall out later, but I'm going to preach now. Come on, time. Time. But God has been stirring up this word in my heart. Amen, somebody. Sister Al is about to jump. We was amen. talking about this earlier. Amen, somebody. She didn't know I was ministering on this text. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. I'm reading out of the King James Version. It says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink. For there is a sound of abundance. Somebody say the sound, the sound. Of, abundance. of abundance. Say abundance. abundance. Somebody say, I hear, I hear a, lot. a lot. Somebody say, I hear it. I hear it. And it's a lot. And it's a lot. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. So Ahab went up, verse 42, to eat and drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Somebody say, I hear the sound. I hear the sound. But I don't see nothing. But I don't see nothing. Somebody say, I hear a sound. I hear a sound. Sound like a lot. Sound like a lot. But I don't see a thing. But I don't see a thing. He says, I, I, I see nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time. He said, behold, there arises a little cloud. Somebody say, I see something. I see something. But it don't look like much. But it don't look like much. Yeah. He said, I see a cloud. There arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot, get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was on Elisha. And he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Somebody say amen. Amen. Tell somebody say neighbor. Neighbor. I hear the sound, I hear the sound of, abundance. of abundance. Tell your other neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. This is how you come out of a dry place. Oh yes. Clap those hands. Yeah. Up there, God, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell three people, I don't want to stay the same. I don't want to stay the same. I don't want to stay the same. Tell them I want better. I want better. I don't talk better. I want better. I want better. I want better. I want to live better. Yes. I want to have better. Yes. God knows I want to feel better. Yes. I want to look better. I want to praise better. I want to pray better. I want to be a better worshiper. Tell somebody, I want better. Now, if you want better, you got to become better. Somebody say amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. I'm about to have better. I'm about to have better. A few things I need to just lay some groundwork in this message, if you don't mind. The land of Israel is languishing under a three and a half year drought. Because of the drought, people are starving. Thousands have died. The nation of Israel is in desperate condition. Can somebody say amen? 
Amen. Of course, there has been no rain because of the idolatry of the people. How many here understand that sometimes you can end up in a drought because you're worshiping something other than God? Amen. Somebody say amen. Sometimes, what I mean by that is that your attention is turned so far from God, your life begins to dry up. Woo. Somebody say amen. Amen. The prophet Elijah has prayed, and God has opened up the heavens, and he sends down fire from heaven and burns up the sacrifice and all of the water that is laid on the altar as he makes his confrontation with the 40 and 50 prophets of Baal. Proving, amen, to Israel that God is the Lord of all. Yes, sir. Israel comes and repents. They bow before God, proclaim their faith and their allegiance to God. And Elijah rises up and he slays the 450 false prophets of Baal. And I want to tell you right there, he's had a very busy day. Somebody say amen. Amen. He's been busy all day, he's been working all day, and most people, after they have done all of this work already, probably would have tried to find a place to go rest. But Elijah says the work is still not yet done. While most of us would have been looking for a place to rest, Elijah, instead of savoring in the victory that he had over the false prophets of Baal, Elijah gets to work again to make sure that the rain comes like God promised that it would. So I want to tell you that there are many peripheral things that could be going on in your life, but God wants you to make sure that the promise that God ordained for your life that you see to it. Tell somebody you better see to it. You ought to tell yourself there is no quitting place. Amen, somebody. There's always another level to go to. There's always something else for me to do in the kingdom. There never comes a day in our walk with God when we can uh, sit by and have the opportunity to sit down and do nothing. For our God is not a do-nothing God. I was saying somebody in here. There's not a time when there's not anything in the kingdom for us to do. That's why we've got to be busy about my father's business. The Bible says we must work while it is day, for when night cometh, no man, somebody say, can work. The second point that I want to make out of this text real quickly is that there were children that were born during the drought. They had never made a mud pie. They had never known what it was like to feel the dewdrops of rain. These are little children who had never played in the rain. They don't know what it's like to enjoy the goodness of rain. Has anybody ever seen a place that has been real, real dry? Has it rained in a long time? They were in barren conditions and they were born into it. They were raised into it. And there are just some believers who fit in two categories. One is that they have felt the rain. They know what it's like to be in the presence of God. Uh, they have enjoyed the blessings of God and they know what it's like for it to rain. <laughs> but for some reason or another, they have allowed themselves to get into a situation where their life has become barren, brittle, and dry. And then there are those who come into the kingdom of God uh, but never really experience the full promises of the Lord. Uh, they don't know what it really feels like to really get a breakthrough. Uh, they don't know what it really feels like for it to rain down in their life. Uh, well, I stop by here for, vote for both groups of people. Uh, I stop by here for those who have had the rain, but for some reason or another, uh, they're going through a drought. Uh, and I stop by here for somebody who's never had a mirror. Come on, guys. You're not going to hear me in there. I stop by here for somebody who don't know what it's like uh, to have the power of God move in their life. Uh, oh my God, up in here. They came in and just don't understand why it is that they've never had the miraculous in their life. Uh, you ought to high five your own self and say, baby, hey. the drought is over. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Hey. Sometimes. Hallelujah. Believers are going through droughts and dry places. And there are some of God's people who have never played in the
in the rain. They never wallowed in the watersheds of heaven. But again, I got good news. It's about to rain. Tell somebody it's about to rain. And so here we find the prophet Elijah. If you go back in 1 Kings chapter 18, in the first verse, God told Elijah to confront Ahab and he would send the rain. This is a very important part of my text because Elijah did as he was commanded. Somebody said you got to do what's commanded. If you want rain, you've got to do what is commanded. Now Ahab wanted to kill him. Ahab had made other nations vow as he went into the other nations to search for Ahab. He made them vow that Ahab was not in their land. Y'all not going to talk to me again. Ahab was looking that Elijah was not in their land. Ahab was looking to kill Elijah. But Elijah goes to the prophet and tells the prophet over there. He says, go tell Ahab, I'm here. God sent me to confront you even though you want to kill me. I'm here to tell you that even when your enemies look to slay you, the devil cannot do you no harm when you are following the commands of God. You ought to tell somebody, hold on, God is working it out. So even though my greatest enemy, my greatest adversary wants to slay me, he can't touch me as long as I'm doing what God commands. Why did Ahab want to do so desperately what God commanded? Because God had promised him in the text in 18 and 1 that if he did what he said, it was going to rain. How many here know that God will make a promise, but it will be conditional? God said, I'm going to send the blessing, but I just need you to obey me. Somebody say amen. amen. So in verse 41, the Bible says, the late Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up. Eat and drink, for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. Elijah said, it's not a sprinkle. It's not a shower. It's an abundance. In other words, overflow is coming. Tell somebody, overflow is coming. According to the scriptures that we just read, nobody heard the sound except for the prophet Elisha. Not even his servant. Not everyone is going to hear it. I was to ask somebody in here. Not everyone, even in this church, can hear the sound from heaven. If God can find a man a woman who will put his or her ear to the mouth of God. God said, I will sin. You ought to ask yourself, say, Sim, what do you hear? Because often before you see it, you've got to be able to hear it. That's why the Bible says, he that have an ear, let him hear. Oh, what the Spirit is saying to the church. And the Spirit of God is saying that there is more than enough. I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. You ought to put your ear up and say, can you hear that? Can you hear that? I hear something on the horizon right now that's better than my present condition. I hear something in the future that's better than the condition and the situation that I'm in right now. I wish I had somebody in here that would believe God. He just heard God say, I'm going to send the rain. There was no cloud. There was no noise. It was just faith. You ought to tell somebody it's just faith. With faith, all things are possible to him that believes. I know that there has been no rain. There's people that are born that have never even heard of rain. They've never seen rain. There's two and three and a half year old children that don't know what rain looks like. There's people who have forgotten what it's like to feel the rain. But just because other people cannot identify with the promises of God for your life, you've got to have just faith. For the Bible says the just shall live by faith and not by sight. Elijah knew. Tell somebody he knew it. He knew that rain was coming. How? How did he know that the rain was about to come? The ear of faith hears what the flesh cannot see. I said the ears of faith hears. Y'all don't hear me what he what the flesh cannot see. Oftentimes God tells it, tells it to you before it shows it to you. I said God tells it to you 
to see whether or not you're going to hold on to it. Uh, to see whether or not he, you're going to believe it. Uh, oftentimes, God will tell it to you uh, before he shows it to you. Uh, in fact, being able to hear in the spirit uh, is more powerful than being able to see in the natural. Uh, when a man reaches the place uh, where the world is shut out, and he can hear the plans of God's blessing for his or her life before it appears. Oh, that man of God and that woman of God is on their way to someplace great. Somebody clap their hands and give God a praise. I love what Elijah is doing here because Elijah is not just in expectation. He is in acceptance that it's about to rain. He's not just looking for rain. He knows that it's going to rain. He's accepted the fact that rain is coming. Sometimes you don't just expect to get you've settled into it. You've rested in it. Amen, somebody. You're not just waiting for it. You already know that it's about to happen. That was I had somebody here. When you expect it, you can still be a little antsy, a little uncomfortable. Amen. You're pacing the floor, waiting for its arrival. But when you are in acceptance, you can rest in it. Uh, oh, I wish I had somebody in here. You ought to tell somebody, I receive it. I receive it. Uh, oh, I wish I had somebody in here. If you can believe it, uh, you can receive it. Uh, oh, I wish I had somebody in here. All things are possible to him uh, that believe it. The Bible says when you pray, uh, believe that you have already received it. Uh, that means you are the accepted. Uh, now, when I accept something from somebody, uh, I often have learned uh, it's just good to be polite and say thank you. I tell you right now for the promises that God has already declared for your life. I tell you to stand on your feet right in this paper. It's about to rain. I said it's about to feel my health again. I tell you to say thank you. Thank you. I know that the rain is coming. You might not believe it, but it's not for you to believe. You might not see it, but I hear the sound. I hear it. I hear it. I know it don't look like it, but I still hear it. I know it don't feel like it, but I hear it. I hear it. So the Bible says in verse 42, Thank you. Whew, 18th chapter, Thank you. it says Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Listen, if you want rain, you got to watch what you do when you hear about the rain. Men had heard that it was going to rain. Elijah told Ahab, it's about to rain. But Ahab does something different than Elijah. Elijah decides that he is going to go to the Mount of Carmel and meet with his father. While Ahab wandered off to feed his flesh. You ought to watch where you go. When you get a word from the Lord, you cannot feed your flesh. You got to feed. I feel my head here. You got to feed your spirit. Ahab went to go get him a drink and something to eat. He went to nourish the natural man. Y'all don't hear me in here. But Elijah the prophet said, I still am waiting on the promise of God to manifest. And I've got to feed my faith. I've got to feed my spirit while I'm waiting for my rain to show up in my life. Y'all don't hear me in here. You got to shut your flesh down and tell your spirit man to rise up and go and meet God. Y'all don't hear me in here. Meet him in the morning in the prayer closet. Meet him in the church house. Meet him, meet him. Meet him in your car. Drive into work. Y'all don't hear me in here. Tell somebody I'm going 
to meet with God. The plans of God are yea and amen. God has a plan, a destiny for my life. What's wrong with some people is that they get the promise but do what Ahab does. They go and feed their flesh and not their spirit. If I'm in the right says, and he said unto his servant, go and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And he said, go again seven times. <laughs> First thing I need to point out about this is that he had him search the big sky for something small. Y'all hear what I say? He had him looking for a cloud in the vastness of the sky. I wish I had somebody. Tell somebody, seek and you will find. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Something about looking for it. Something about having it come to you. Somebody said, you got to look for it. You got to look for it. Isn't it funny how God will have you look for something great in a place that's great? God will have you look for something that seems so minute in such a big space. It's not that it's not there. God wants you to keep looking until your faith begins to manifest it. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. Y'all ought to tell somebody, I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't quit looking, baby. I know you don't see it yet. But don't tell somebody, don't tell, don't stop looking. Tell three people, you got to provoke your reign. Tell somebody, you got to provoke it, you got to provoke it, you got to provoke it. Elijah is about to provoke a rainfall. He said, well, why, Pastor, why is he about to provoke a rainfall? It is because the servant came back with these three words. There is nothing. When you don't see nothing, baby, you've got to make something happen. You're not going to talk to me in here. Provoke means to deliberately incite something, to do something. It means to incite by arousing. It means to stimulate into action. Whenever you say provoke, you're talking about deliberate action. Somebody say deliberate. It's deliberate. Some people look at you and say, how are you getting over it? How are you being blessed? But they don't know that it's deliberate that you wake up before everybody else and get down on your knees and seek God. They don't know how deliberate your actions are for the steps of a good man. They are deliberately ordered. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Tell somebody I was going to be delivered. I didn't get a word from God and it's going to happen on purpose. You ought to tell somebody I'm going to live my purpose. I'm going to live it on purpose. This is not by accident, baby. When you see me walking in the blessings of God, it didn't happen by accident. It happened because I heard a word and I ran with it. I ran. The Bible says when you hear the vision, run, run, run. Run, write it down. Tell somebody to run with it. Run. You better run like you ain't never ran before. You better run the race with patience. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every sin. Tell somebody, run, run, run. On the other side of nothing, you've got to do something. On one side, there is the promise. On this side, there is nothing. While you're on this side, and that side says nothing, you can't be on this side and do nothing. You've got to do something on the other side of your nothing. Tell somebody you got to do something on the other side of your nothing. So when you have nothing, nothing. 
you still got to do something. And so the Bible says that Elijah had heard the word that there was nothing. What I love about what Elijah did was that he did not fall out. He did not faint. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter number 5, be not weary and well doing, for you will reap if you faint not. He didn't fall out. He didn't faint. He didn't pout. He didn't kick the dirt. He didn't go ahead and throw himself a temple tantrum and give up and walk away. When you are on the other side of nothing, what you do on the other side of nothing determines whether or not you are going to receive your rain. And so on the other side of nothing, Elijah tells his servant, go up and look again. The servant comes back with the three words. There is nothing. Yet Elijah kept believing. Elijah kept praying. He did not allow the outward circumstances affect his inward assurance that the answer surely was on the way. I stopped by here to tell somebody you will experience delays, but delay is not denied. On the other side of your nothing, you got to pray until it becomes a reality. High five your own self and say you need to provoke your rainfall. See, Elijah needed the rain. Tell somebody, I need the rain. I need the rain. If it does not rain, everything around me is going to die. If I don't get the rain, everything I'm counting on is going to fall apart. I need the rain. Sometimes in your life, you cannot back up off the promises of God. You've got to tell the devil, hell I didn't hear it. The other prophets didn't hear it. But 
Elijah heard it. Sometimes God will speak to your life. He'll tell you in the secret closet of your prayer life that you are meant for more than this. He will tell you that he has blessed you. He'll keep you. He has told you that he has called you from the womb of your mother. He's told you that he's allowed you to go through what you went through because there was purpose behind your pain. He says if you just endure for a little while, it's going to rain like you couldn't believe in your life. It's going to pour down rain. And just because you're praying for rain doesn't mean that there's not a whole slew of people that need the rain as bad as you. You need it to rain in your life because the rain that falls on you can fall on your mama, fall on your sister, fall on your father, fall in your house, fall in your children, fall on your business, fall on your friends, fall on your community, fall on your block. Somebody needs the rain other than you. God raised you up that you might bring rain to somebody other than yourself. Shout glory in here. Somebody pray, pray. Pray until it happens. Prayer. Elijah provoked rain with prayer. The Bible says that he went up to Carmel and he put his head between his knees and threw himself to the ground. And while the others were looking, he was praying. Tell somebody that day you to pray about it. I dare you to pray about it. Pray until you start feeling the drops. Pray till God answers. Never, tell somebody never. never. Accept your possession, your position, your present possession, position as final. Tell somebody it's not final. Tell somebody it's not over yet. And so the Bible says that it came to pass at the seventh time. He said, Behold, arise, there's a little cloud. I love this seven time because seven is the number of completions. Uh, yes. How many of you know that six? Listen, let me be real careful. I'm about to blow your mind. I'm about to tell you something God told me. And you don't have to agree with me, but it's okay. Because I don't care. It's all right. I don't really don't. Somebody say amen. Six. How many know that six is the number of man? Six represents weakness, it represents frailty, it represents inability, it represents all kinds of things that represent man's uh, 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 own ineffectiveness, amen. And so seven is the number of completeness. How many of you know that when a man, listen to me, when a man gets saved, when a man gets saved, the Bible says he becomes a new creature. Y'all hear what I said? When a six meets God, Y'all hear what I said? God, how many, how many gods are there? One God. When a six meets a one, six and one becomes. Y'all hear what I said? That's why the Bible says you are a new creature. I'm not that old six. I'm a new. Y'all not gonna hear what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says that we are complete. Y'all don't want to talk to me. That we are complete. Need it here, y'all to take that and run with it. Because listen here, the devil can mess with a six, but he can't do nothing with a seven. Y'all don't hear me in here. I can believe it here. All I need a man in here. Y'all a shot glory. Glory. Somebody say, I'm a seven, baby. I'm a seven. I know I don't look like it, but I am a seven. I'm a seven because God made me a seven. Oh, you don't hear what I said? Because if he be in me, he is all in the world. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. Shot glory, somebody. There arises a little cloud. A little cloud. Few folk in your church, just a little cloud. Two or three people. Twelve disciples. Not a bunch, but a little. How many here know that God has an abundance of something that don't look like? It's much. Come on now. Listen, if you're going to have a rain, you cannot rebuke the little cloud. When the little cloud comes, you can't say, oh Lord, this ain't what I prayed for. This is not what I'm looking for. Come on, come on, come on. I love Elijah's attitude when he hears that 
It's just a little cloud. Now, he needs rain for a whole lot of people. He needs rain for cattle. He needs rain for the crops. He needs rain for the people. They need drinking water. He don't need a drop. He needs an abundance. But abundance don't show up. What shows up is this tiny, little, itty, bitty, teeny, weeny, little cloud. Amen, somebody. That's about the size of a man's hand. Now, I would be thinking, how much rain could you possibly get out of a little bitty cloud? But how many here knows? The Bible says in the book of Zechariah, I believe it's the fourth chapter, somewhere around the tenth verse, it says, despise not the days of small beginnings. Y'all don't hear me again. Just because something is small right now, don't you turn your nose up at it. I love it when folk turn up their nose at us because we're a little bitty small stove front looking church right now. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. But that's sometimes all God needs to bring an abundance. You might have something a little bitty idea, a little bitty thought, a little bitty concept that somebody else may shrug off as unimportant or insignificant, but it's life changing. Y'all don't want to hear me in here. God can give you a little bit of something that will pour out showers of rain. This is what I love about Elijah. Elijah, when he heard the word, that there was something that came out of nothing. At first he had nothing, but when he got a little something, he started giving God glory. I love it. When people are grateful for just a little bit, can you give God for just can you give God a praise for just a tiny little? Oh God, this is so much better. I'm looking at something that says I got a potential. Oh, this looks like I got an opportunity. This is like a door might be opening. I'm gonna get up and run. So the Bible says that it came to pass. And he told Elijah, uh, Ahab, Elijah told Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down. Don't stop uh, off this little bitty clown. He starts giving instruction, you better run because the abundance is here. Something big and something small. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. I've got something big got something and big. Something, small. something small. And so the Bible says in verse 45, it came to pass in the meanwhile, the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Uh, somebody say, anointed to move in ways you couldn't move before. And so here we find the rain is falling, and all of a sudden the rain is so hard, instantaneously almost the dry ground turns into mud. Y'all are hearing what I'm saying? Ahab is on a chariot, and the wheels are being stuck. Y'all don't hear what I said? It looked like people who should be ahead of you, your critics who laughed at you, even the ones that talked about you, like Ahab who tried to kill you, all of a sudden are going to get stuck in the mud. The rain also comes to hinder your enemy so that you can shoot past them. Y'all not going to hear what I say. Don't you worry about folk laughing at you and talking about you, thinking you crazy, that you out of your double cotton pick and mic. You go ahead and keep believing God because when the rain comes, you're going to be anointed to move yes. and what they get stuck in. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The Bible says that as Ahab was trying to get his chariot of steel to move in the mud, Elijah comes down and all he can hear behind him is the sound of sandals. Ahab girded himself and the Bible says that he outran Ahab's chariot. The hand of the Lord was upon him and he was able to move in a way that he had never been able to move before. He had spent everything he had. All day he had been fighting against evil. He had been fighting against the prophets of Baal. He had been praying against the evil that was in Israel. He had come against all kinds of adversaries. But before the day was done, Ahab was moving with more power and more authority than ever before. He was moving at lightning speed. He hadn't eaten anything, hadn't drunk anything. The man should have been weak in his physical man, but the strength of the Lord was on his side. You ought to tell somebody, I'm anointed. 
change uh, to move. Uh, that means that I'm anointed to make progress uh, when other people are stuck, uh, when the economy is falling apart. Uh, I'm still making money. Uh, when people are looking around trying to pay their bills, uh, my car no pay, uh, my house no pay. Uh, when other people are trying to get their children to straighten up, uh, I'm laying hands. Uh, I'm anointed with oil. Uh, Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Uh, I see my babies coming uh, one by one. Uh, what must I do? Uh, what must I do? Uh, what must I do? Y'all don't want to pray with me in here. I feel my help in here. You ought to shout for glory. Yeah. 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 Anointed to move what other people get stuck in. Church tradition, religion, stuck in it. Somebody say amen. amen. I hear a sound. And it's not the sound of lack. It's not the sound of poverty. It's not the sound of sickness. It's not the sound of disease. But it's the sound of worship. It's the sound. See, the abundance of rain is loose with the sound of worship. I hear the sound of prayer. I wish I had somebody here. I hear the sound of faith. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it to somebody. I hear it. I hear it. I hear God moving on the behalf of somebody right now in this room. In the name of Jesus, you've been in a dry, drought place, unable to, amen, feel your help, amen. Sometimes when the rain don't fall, amen, things begin to dry up in your life. Resources dry up, friends dry up, amen. It's hard to get a prayer through. But I stop by here to tell somebody, rain is here. It's about to rain. Now you've got to do what Ahab did. When he saw just a little cloud, he began to go into action. He didn't just sit there. He said, it's time to get down before we drown. It's time to make a move. It's time to get up from here. Hallelujah. Somebody say, it's time to make a move. So what I need you to do for the next few minutes while we're in this place under this anointing is I need you to give God glory. Like you're about to have a rain. Like that. I'm not, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about a clap. I'm not talking about a pity. Yeah, yeah. yes, I'm so. talking about you better run. You better yes, get up. I should see you run around the sanctuary. Yes. You better act like you're crazy. Hallelujah. I'm a little in mind. Yes. The abundance that's coming. Oh, somebody deserves your best praise. Yes. The abundance Hallelujah. that's coming deserves the glory that you're going to give God. The abundance that's coming deserves a shout. It deserves for you to do what you've never done before. If you want to have what you've never had before, I tell you to shout glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you. You don't need no musician. You don't need no music. Yeah. Hallelujah. All you need is a real, genuine praise. Yeah. Yeah. Elijah didn't have no minstrels. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have no organ players. Yes. yes. He didn't have nobody on no tambourine. He didn't have no music tracks. Y'all don't hear what I say. On, he now. had faith. Tell somebody, I got faith. I got faith. I got faith. Faith, faith. I need rain. I need rain. Hallelujah. Woo. 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 Yeah. Hey. Jesus, yeah. Jesus, rain 
rain on us. Jesus, rain on me. Yes. I tell you to pray. Jesus, Jesus, rain on me. Rain on me. Thank you.
trying to let you go. But I feel God's anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need prayer, I want you to come right now. Come on, let me pray for you. So there can be a release in your life. Come on. 